In this tutorial, we are going to create a hexagonal structure from a surface. The first step is to create a hexagonal grid. This is uh, found underneath vector, grids, and hexagonal. Um, the default base plate here is fine. You don't need to change that, nor do you need to change the size of the radius as well. We're instead going to change the size through the density within, um, within the panels. So let's set up a slider for the um, grid. Uh, because of how the pattern is being drawn, um, set these as odd numbers. So we're going to do one for the amount in the x and the amount in the y direction. And um, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to set these at different values so you can see um, how they kind of interact with each other. So in order to draw the frame, um, we're going to first use the grid cell outline. So underneath curve, utility, go to offset. We're going to offset those curves, and we can set up the amount of offset by a slider. And since our radius is at 1, um, I think it would be good just to do between 0 and 0.5 as our values. Um, so you can see here now the <coughs> offset. And this is just kind of a stylistic choice, but to kind of smooth the edges of the hexagon underneath utility, <coughs> um, fill it. I'm going to do that, but this is optional. Um, and I'm going to set it as the same value as the offset distance. And you can see now, if we turn this off, you can see as, you know, the offset get bigger, it becomes more of a circle in the center and out. So remember to set now a parameter for these new curves that we made. And I'm also going to flatten um, the filleted edges as well as um, the hexagots as well. So now let's go back to the hex grid and the points at grid setters. Basically, in order to draw a frame um, to be able to create um, a pattern that can be repeated, we want to be able to draw a line and trim out from this center point, this center point, to this one, and this one. Um, so we need to find a way with uh, the data and the, the list command in order to get those points. So let's just see how this is set up by going through list item. We'll set a slider here um, of integers. And so to get the bottom left hand um, point, you can see that's at um, item 0. And then the top ones are at item 4. And even though we have basically five hexagons in that direction, because of how the data management is, it starts at zero. So this would be zero, one, two, three, and four. So knowing that, let's set up um, an integer here of zero to extract the bottom information. And let's also go to scalar, operators, and subtraction. And we'll take hex y, and we are going to subtract it by 1. So great. Now we have these two rows. Now we need to go to logic, tree, and flatten tree. And this is just to take that one branch of information that forms those three and to basically make it three separate values that we can then extract in the same mode that we just did. So now let's take item with the 0. And now that's our bottom left-hand point. And to get to the bottom right point, we're going to have to do something similar that we did here. But instead of subtracting the hex y number by 1, we're going to subtract the hexagons in the x direction by 1. And just make sure that it's taking the list from the information that you just flattened. So now we have those two points, and we can copy and paste that to do it for the top list. There. So there we go. Um, let's set up parameters now to label those points. Um, be careful. We're going to draw lines now between these to make, um, to make our frame. So just be careful that you're labeling these correctly. Point zero, point one, because as you see, this one that I have now is in the top left-hand corner, so I'm going to make that 3 instead of 2. Uh, 
All right, um, so now underneath curve, primitive, we'll go to line, we'll draw between 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and 3 and 0. I'm just going to put all these into one parameter, so you can do that by holding down the shift key. And let's label that rectangle or I don't know, whatever you want. So let's bring our hexagons we maybe four over. Let's turn all the stuff off and see what we're doing. So now we have the hexagons, we have the frame, but basically we want the space between the two as um, kind of what we're going to apply to the surface. So let's get that by going to surface, free form. We're going to make both the rectangle and the hexagons planar surfaces. Now we're going to go to intersect, boolean, and we're going to do trim solid. And basically the rectangles here, this surface, is the main surface that you want, and you want to trim away the hexagons from it. So now let's turn that off and you can see what we have as a result. Let's make that a parameter. So we'll call this a uh, surface. So now we have our uh, geometry, but we need to be able to apply it to a surface. But first, in order to do that, we need to create a bounding box. So we're going to take the rectangular planar surface that we made. Let's turn it back on so we can see it. And we're going to extrude that. Um, we need a distance for it. So let's go to vector, constants, unit Z. Um, so now that's being extruded out. Um, still needs to be a, a bounding box. Surface, primitive bounding box. So now that's our bounding box. Let's make that a parameter too so we can turn off those other things and keep our information kind of organized. Okay, so what we need now is a surface that um, we can morph this to. Uh, so let's just make a curve and let's extrude this. however much you want. So now let's bring that into Grasshopper by making um, surface parameter, set one surface. There we go. Let's label that. Um, okay, so now we need to create surface boxes. So underneath X form, morph, surface box. Um, so this is asking for the surface, here we go, but now this is asking for the surface domain, and because we want multiple boxes, we want multiple values along the domain. So let's go to our scalar, domain, we're going to divide domain, so the i value is our surface. This is going to go here, and now we need the, we can set up the values for u and v on sliders if we want. So. All right, so let's set these up. You can see the box is being created now. All right, so now this last step, now that we have our surface boxes and we have all the other things we need, is we need to morph it. Let's go to X-Form Morph. We're going to do Box Morph. We have base geometry, which is the geometry that we want to now project onto that surface. Um, we have the reference box, which is our bounding box we made. Um, it's basically the box that contains the geometry that we want to morph. And now the translation, the one to translate onto, gets connected. And we'll wait for it to get applied. And now let's turn off everything. And you can see now the hexagons being applied onto there.